بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دی لاسٹ لیکچر وی فینشڈ وتھ دی انٹرنل فیچرز اف دی مڈ برین نو دیر آر سم انٹرنل فیچرز وچ نیڈ مور ڈیٹیل سو وی ول وی ول ڈسکس سم اف دیز انٹرنل فیچرز اف دی مڈ برین ان ڈیٹیل Now the midbrain has tracts, descending tracts and ascending tracts. Now the descending tracts descending are motor tracts. These are located in the crust cerebri. Then you know the dorsal part of the midbrain is the tegmentum. So what are the tracts in the tegmentum of midbrain? These are ascending are sensory tracts and there are few descending tracts in the tegmentum of the midbrain. So if we cut a section, cross section of the midbrain cross section of the midbrain ventrally cross cerebri and dorsal to the cross cerebri is substantia nigra Then posterior part is the tegmentum traversed by cerebral aqueduct surrounded by central gray matter and then re tectal region in which there are nuclei of the superior and inferior calculi. So in the cross cerebri there are only descending tracts. Descending are motor tracts. And uh, you know that the cross cerebri is divided into medial part, intermediate part and later part. In the medial part of the crust cerebri, there are corticopontine tracts. In the lateral part, 
the Krasibrai, again there are Kartiko Pontine tracks. Corticopontine tracks, they arise from all parts of the cerebral cortex. Now, as each cerebral hemisphere has lobes, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe, therefore these corticopontine tracts, according to the lobe of the cerebrum, comprise of frontopontine, So in the uh, medial part of the crust cerebri, the corticopontine tracts arise from the cortex of the frontal lobe. Therefore, these corticopontine fibers in the medial part of the crust cerebri are frontopontine tracts. Then again, the corticopontine tracts descend through the lateral part of the crust cerebri. Corticopontine and these corticopontine fibers they arise from parietal lobe, therefore, the tract is known as parieto pontine. They arise from the occipital lobe cortex, occipital pontine. and they arise from the temporal, from the cortex of the temporal lobe known as temporopontine tracts. So, the medial part, to the medial part recursive eye the corticopontine tracts descend, they are frontopontine tracts because they arise from the cortex the frontal lobe. And the lateral part of the crest cerebri, again the descending tracts are, arise from the cortex uh, to the pontine nuclei, they are called corticopontine tracts. And these arise from the cortex of parietal lobe, so those uh, tracts descended which arise from the cortex of parietal lobe are called parietopontine tracts. Those from the cortex of occipital lobe called occipitopontine tracts, and those which arise from the temporal lobe cortex are known as the uh, temporopontine tracts. Now, the intermediate part. Intermediate part. middle part, intermediate part of the uh, uh, crust cerebri. Here again the descending tracts uh, which descend through the intermediate part are corticorubral tracts. Corticorubral tracts then corticonuclear and corticospinal tracts. And corticospinal tracts. These are the three types of descending tracts which descend through the intermediate part of the crust cerebri. Uh, Corticorubral tract, corticonuclear tracts, and corticospinal tracts. Now, for this, uh, to remember the names of these tracts in the intermediate part, there is mnemonic.
that is red nucleus shine. Just remember red nucleus shine. Red nucleus shine. Red it uh, stand for the cortico rubral tract. Cortico rubral tract. R rubral cortico rubral tract. Then uh, nucleus and cortico nuclear tract. And for nucleus, cortico nuclear, cortico nuclear tract, also known as the cortico bulbar tract because the old name for the medulla oblongata is bulb. So, cortico nuclear tracts. And uh, shine cortico spinal tracts. So, as for spinal, cortico spinal. So this mnemonic will help you to remember the descending tracts uh, passing down through the intermediate part of the crest cerebri. The cortico-rubral tract, cortico-nuclear, which is also known as the cortico-bulbar tract, and cortico-spinal tracts. So these were uh, descending or motor tracts descending to the three parts of the cross cerebri of the midbrain. Next, what are the tracts passing through the tegmentum of the midbrain? There are ascending tracts. Ascending are sensory tracts. And there are few descending tracts. Traversing the tegmentum of the uh, uh, midbrain. Now the ascending are sensory tracts. I told you there is a white band in the midbrain starting behind the later part of the substantia nigra laterally. This uh, white band comprise of lemniscae. So from medial to lateral side, this is medial lemniscus. Then lateral to it, Trigeminal lemniscus. Then still lateral to it is the spinal lemniscus. And 
the most lateral one is the lateral lemniscus. So these are four lemnisci. which ascend through the tegmentum of the midbrain. Momentum of the midbrain. So these are ascending tracts, ascending to the tegmentum of the midbrain. Now to remember the names of these lemniscae or lemniscal system. Uh, there is again a uh, mnemonic which will help you to remember the names of these. In the sky from medial to lateral side. These lemniscae from medial to lateral side. There is another uh, mnemonic, my tongue speaks loud. My tongue speaks loud from medial to lateral side. My M for medial lemniscus. T for trigeminal lemniscus. Speaks S spinal lemniscus. And uh, loud L for lateral lemniscus. So this uh, mnemonic will help you to remember the names of these lemniscae in the tegmentum of the midbrain from medial to lateral side. Medial lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus, lateral lemniscus. Now this spinal lemniscus, 
is the combination of ventral and lateral spinothalamic tract. Ventral spinothalamic tract and lateral spinothalamic tracts. These two tracts we join together to form spinal lemniscus. So these were the ascending or sensory tracts in the tegmentum of the midbrain. And then I told you that there are a few descending tracts also in the tegmentum of midbrain. First of all, we talk about the Ascending tracts are laminar sky. And now we are going to talk about few descending tracts in the tegmentum of the midbrain. Uh, these are Uh, the rubrospinal tract rubrospinal tract tectonuclear tract and tectospinal tracts spinal tracts and reticulospinal tracts these are some of the few descending tracts descending through the tegmentum of the uh, midbrain now for it uh, also there is a mnemonic which will help you to remember the names of these texts. Mnemonics for descending tracks. Tegmentum. Uh, that is rupees ten thousand recovered. Rupees ten thousand recovered. So RS rupees that is rubro spinal tract.
rubro spinum RS R for rubro and S for spinal rubro spinal tract then 10,000 tecto spinal Uh, tecto uh, nuclear, sorry. Tecto nuclear tract. Then tecto spinal tract. Spinal tract T for tectum and S for spinal tecto spinal tract that are released, sorry, recovered uh, released. Reticulo spinal tract. Uh, released R for reticulo, S for spinal. Reticulo spinal tract. So this is a mnemonic to remember the. Uh, names of few uh, descending tracts descending through the tegmentum of the midbrain that is rubrospinal tract, tectospinal tract, uh, tectonuclear tract and tectospinal tract and reticulospinal tract. The tectonuclear tract also known as the tectobulbar tract, tectonuclear or tectobulbar Tract from tectum to nuclei of the uh, medulla or bulb, so tecto bulbar tract. So these were the uh, ascending and few descending tracts traversing the tegmentum of the bed brain. Now the, these descending and ascending tracts. This is a midbrain. and mental aggregator. Now through the brain stem. Brain stem comprise of midbrain. 
forms and metal obligator. The ascending and descending tracts, they run parallel to the long axis of the brainstem. Suppose these are descending tracts and these are ascending tracts. Both ascending tracts and descending tracts, they run parallel to the long axis of the brainstem. Ascending and descending tracks run parallel to the long axis of brainstem. But uh, the cranial nerves, the cranial nerves, they run perpendicular to the long axis. various cranial nerve nuclei giving rise to cranial nerve which leave the brainstem. So what is the disposition of ascending and its descending tracts and cranial nerve through the brainstem? Through the brainstem. The The descending tracts and ascending tracts, they run parallel to the long axis of the brainstem, midbrain, pons and medulla brachiata. But the cranial nerves, they run at right angle or perpendicular to the long axis of the brainstem. These are cranial nerve fibers. Now this uh, knowledge is very important to understand the uh, clinical picture that is to localize the site of lesion. To localize the site of lesion in brain stem. This will help you at which level the brain stem is damaged. So this was about the disposition of the ascending and descending tracts versus cranial nerve fibers uh, passing through the uh, brain stem. Uh, these, uh, there is another important point also. These uh, ascending and descending tracts, they express their motor and sensory roles on contralateral side. This was the disposition of this diagram shows disposition of ascending and descending tracks and cranial nerves
through Branston. Now, this was its uh, clinical importance. Clinical importance uh, regarding the disposition of the ascending and descending tracts and uh, cranial nerve fibers through the brainstem. Then, another important point to remember is that the tracts ascending and descending tracts the ascending and descending express their motor and sensory rules express their sensory and motor rules on the contralateral side. Now the cranial nerves express their sensory and motor rules their sensory and motor rules on the ipsilateral side So this was another very important um, clinical point to remember that the ascending and descending tracts they express their sensory and motor roles on the contralateral side while pertaining to the cranial nerves the cranial nerves they express their sensory and motor uh, roles on the ipsilateral side on the same side Now we will discuss uh, briefly the pathway of all these tracts, ascending and uh, descending tracts. Right and left sable hemisphere front view. This is cerebral cortex. Uh, 
मिड ब्रेन Mirlabrigeta downward as spinal cord. कार्ड मेडल आप पॉन्स मेड बने Several cortex of cerebrum, you know, the fibers, they are arranged in a fan shaped manner, known as the corona radiata. These fibers converge on internal capsule. Corona radiata. And for example, this is internal capsule. cerebri, bones and medulla obligata, which is continued as spinal cord. Now, first of all, we will talk about the corticorubral tracts. Arise from the cerebral cortex. passes through the corona radiata into the midbrain and in the midbrain there is a red nucleus nucleus rubra now the 
these uh, fibers arising from the cerebral cortex descend through corona radiata descend through internal capsule enter the midbrain where they terminate in the red nuclei So this uh, dark line indicates the corticorubral tract. Then corticopontine. The fibers arise from the cerebral cortex, descend through the corona radiata, descend through the internal capsule, continue to descend through the crust cerebri of the midbrain, enter the pons, where they terminate on the pontine nuclei ipsilaterally suppose this is a middle line and this is a right cerebellar left cerebellar hemisphere and this is right cerebellar hemisphere And you know the right and left cerebellar hemispheres. They are connected to the pons by middle cerebellar peduncle. This is middle cerebellar peduncle. On the right and left side. This is right side and this is left side. <coughs> now the corticopontine tracts or fibers, they arise from the cerebral cortex. <coughs> cerebral cortex continue to descend through corona radiata. passes through internal capsule continue to descend through crust cerebri then from the crust cerebri enter the ventral or basilar part of the pons and then terminate on the pontine nuclei of same site.
on tiny nuclei of same site. On tiny nuclei, ipsilaterally. Ipsilateral site. These fibers are known as the corticopontine fibers. Now from the pontine nuclei, the nerve fibers from the pontine nuclei Sorry for the inconvenience. So. Now from the pontine nuclei, these fibers continue to cross the opposite half of the pons, run through the opposite middle cerebral peduncle to enter the opposite cerebellar hemisphere. Cartico, uh, Carticopontine tracts arise from the cerebral cortex, descend through the corona radiata, passes through the internal capsule, continue to descend through the crest cerebri of the midbrain, enter the pons, and terminate on the pontine nuclei of the same site. Then, from the pontine nuclei, the fibers arise, which enter the opposite cerebellar hemisphere passing through opposite middle cerebellar peduncle. This part of the pathway is known as the corticopontine path and this part is known as the pontocerebellar path. Therefore, this whole pathway is known as the corticopontocerebellar path. What is this path known as cartico? Onto cerebellar pathway. Again, I will repeat corticopontine tracts arising from the cerebral cortex continue to descend through coronary radiata, pass through the internal capsule continue to descend through the crust cerebri of the midbrain, enter the pons, and relay in the pontine nuclei of the same site. Suppose this is right cerebral hemisphere in the right half of the ventral part of the pons. Now from here, the fibers continue to pass through the left half of the pons, passes through the left middle cerebral peduncle and terminate in the opposite cerebellar hemisphere, that is left cerebellar hemisphere. Uh, from cerebral cortex to the pontine nuclei, this pathway, this is known as the corticopontine, and from the pontine nuclei to the opposite cerebral hemisphere called pontocerebellar. So collectively, this is corticopontocerebellar pathway. By this pathway, the cerebellum is connected to cerebral cortex. If you trace it from the opposite side, left cerebral hemisphere, the left corticopontine fibers passing through coronary radiator on the left side, left internal capsule, left cerebral pontine nuclei of the left half of the pons, and then passes uh, through the right middle cerebral particle and terminate in the right uh, cerebral hemisphere. So this was about the corticopontine tract forming the corticopontocerebellar pathway through which the cerebellar cortex is connected to the cerebral cortex and in the relay station in the center is the pontine nuclei. Next, cartico Corticonuclear 
और काटको बल भर काटको न्यूक्लियर और काटको बल भर ट्रैक्ट्स व्हाट इज द कोर्स ऑफ द काटको न्यूक्लियर ट्रैक्ट्स को न्यूक्लियर आठ काट को बल्बर ट्रैक्ट अराइज फ्रॉम सेरवल कॉटेक्स पासिस थ्रू कोरोना रेडिएटा passes through internal capsule then descend through cross cerebri of the midbrain continue to descend through ventral or basal of part of pons then enter into the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata and they relay on the nuclei obligata mostly on opposite side mostly nuclei of the medulla obligata on the opposite side so the cortico nuclear or cortico bulbar tracts arising from the cerebral cortex descend through the corona radiata passes through the internal capsule continue to descend through the cross cerebrae the midbrain descend through the ventral or basal part of the pons enter the medulla oblongata to terminate the nuclei of medulla oblongata mostly opposite side few same side but mostly opposite side these were cortico pontine Now these are cortico nuclear tracts. so cortico bulbar or cortico nuclear tracts arise from the cerebral cortex descend through the corona radiata internal capsule cross cerebrae of the midbrain continue to descend through the ventral or basal part of the pons enter the medulla oblongata where they relay in the um, nuclei in the medulla oblongata mostly opposite side next cortico spinal
corticospinal tracts. Because these tracts descend through the pyramids of the medulla brigata, therefore they are also known as pyramidal tracts. Pyramidal tracts arise from the cerebral cortex. descend through the corona radiata passes through internal capsule descend through crust cerebri of midbrain descend through basilar or ventral part of the pons ventral part of the pons then descend through medulla obligata descend through medulla oblongata which part of the medulla oblongata pyramids Enter the spinal cord. And uh, continue to descend through the funiculi of spinal cord at different levels so corticospinal or pyramidal tracts arising from the cerebral cortex descent through the internal capsule descent through the crust cerebri of the midbrain ventral or basilar part of the pons then pyramids of the medulla brigata now in the lower part of the pyramid of the medulla brigata two third of the fibers they cross two third of the corticospinal tracts they cross and one third remain on the same side leave the medulla brigata to descend through the spinal cord and terminate at different level so this is suppose a corticospinal tract of the opposite side into the medulla brigata and in the lower part they cross so here you can see there is crossing of the corticospinal tracts or pyramidal tracts
corticospinal tracts or pyramidal tracts. So here there is pyramidal decussation. In the lower part of the medulla regata, two-thirds of the pyramidal tracts they cross to the opposite side and one third remain on the same side. And these enter into the spinal cord through various funiculi of the spinal cord. Now suppose if we cut a section of the spinal cord, No spinal cord section. This is the central canal of spinal cord. In the spinal cord, grey matter is inside, white matter is outside. This is the anterior horn of the spinal cord. This is the posterior horn of the spinal cord on each side. And the central part, which is traversed by the central canal. Now, if we draw an imaginary line, we can divide the spinal cord to right and left half. In each half, there are funiculi. This is known as anterior funiculus. Of spinal cord. This is lateral funiculus. spinal cord. And this is posterior funiculus of spinal cord. Now, these pyramidal tracts, after decus partial decussation uh, in the after partial decussation in the lower part of the medulla oblongata, here, 
Two, ter- two third of the cortico spina are pyramidal tracks they cross to the opposite side, and one third remain on the same side. Two third cross and one third uncrossed. So the two thirds of pyramidal tracts which cross and descend through the spinal cord. Some of these cross fibers they descend through the anterior funiculus and some through the posterior funiculus. Uh, uh, some through the lateral funiculus, sorry. So what are these? Tracks passing through the anterior funiculus of spinal cord, known as the anterior cortico spinal tract. Which one? Cross. Crossed interior or ventral corticospinal tract and some of the two-third fibers they continue into the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord and is known as the lateral corticospinal tract which one again crossed The remaining pyramidal tract, that is the uh, uncrossed fibers, one third uncrossed fibers, they continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. And known as the lateral corticospinal tract. But which one uncrossed? Uncrossed. So again, uh, I will repeat what about the uh, cortico. Uh, spinal tracts or pyramidal tracts. They arise from the cerebral cortex, descend through the corona radiata, pass through the internal capsule, descend through the crust cerebri of the midbrain, continue to descend through the ventral or basilar part of the pons, enter the medulla obligata. In the medulla obligata, two thirds of these corticospinal tracts they decussate, they cross to the opposite side and one third remain on the same side. And from the medulla obligata, these continue to descend through the funiculi of spinal cord, which funiculi, anterior funiculus and lateral funiculus. Now, as we have divided these pyramidal tracts or corticospinal tracts into crossed and uncrossed, so they descend through the funiculi of spinal cord and according to the funiculi they are named. So two-third cross fibers, some of the two-third of the cross fibers, they descend through the anterior funiculus of the spinal cord. Therefore, this corticospinal tract is known as the ventral or anterior corticospinal tract. Which fibers? Crossed. So crossed anterior corticospinal tract. Remaining two-third cross fibers, they continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of spinal cord, therefore they are named as the lateral corticospinal tract, again crossed. So two-third of the pyramidal tracts, they decussate, of which some continue to descend through the anterior funiculus spinal cord as anterior 
corticospinal tract, crossed anterior corticospinal tract, and remaining two third fibers continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of spinal cord, and they are, they are known as the crossed lateral corticospinal tract. Now, what about the uncrossed one third? pyramidal tract fibers, corticospinal fibers, they continue to descend to the spinal cord and they descend through which funiculus spinal cord? Through lateral funiculus spinal cord. So these uncrossed one-third fibers descend through the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord, therefore they are known as the uncrossed lateral corticospinal tract. So in this way these uh, pyramidal tracts are divided into these Types. So these were some of the uh, descending or motor texts descending through the crust cerebri of the midbrain and they uh, terminate in the red nucleus of the midbrain in the pontine nuclei of the same side of the midbrain then into the nuclei of the medial obligata and then continue to descend through various funiculi of the spinal cord these are pyramidal tracts or corticospinal tracts so these were some of the um, uh, tracts regarding their detail origin course and, and uh, termination Now another important feature, internal structure, suppose this is at upper level, so this is right nucleus, a columbotron nerve nucleus, and a columbotron nerve fibers. Now here, this is the interpedicular fossa. Interpedicular fossa. This is floor of the interpedicular fossa. Floor of interpedicular fossa which separate the right and left crust cerebri from each other and also right and left substantia nigra now the next important topic is inter pedicular nucleus Now it is an unpaired nucleus located here in the floor of interpedicular fossa. In the floor of the interpedicular fossa, in the midbrain, this is interpedicular nucleus. Only one nucleus is present. Now what is the importance of this uh, nucleus? It is uh, connected to the habinular nucleus. Through fasciculus retroflexes. The interpendicular nucleus, it through a bundle of nerve fibers known as the fasciculus retroflexus is connected with the habinulum nucleus which is an important part of the limbic system and already we discussed this in our previous lecture. 
So the interpeduncular uh, nucleus, which is an armpair nucleus located in the floor of the interpeduncular fossa uh, in the midbrain, it is connected to the habinular nucleus. The habinular nucleus belongs to the limbic system and the bundle of nerve fibers which connect the interpendicular nucleus with the habinular nucleus is the fasciculus retroflexus. So therefore, the interpendicular nucleus uh, is a part of the limbic system which already we have discussed. So, uh, some of the uh, detail of some of the internal features of the midbrain we discussed and remaining uh, important features we will uh, continue to discuss in the um, uh, next lecture. So, uh, thank you very much and uh, keep learning. Thank you. Arise from the cerebral cortex. Descend through the corona radiata. Passes through internal capsule. Descent through crust cerebri of midbrain. Descent through basilar or ventral part of the pons. Ventral part of the pons then descend through medulla obligata descend through medulla oblongata which part of the medulla oblongata pyramids then enter the spinal cord and uh, continue to descend through the Funiculi of spinal cord at different levels. Corticospinal or pyramidal tracts arising from the cerebral cortex descend through the internal capsule Descend through the crust cerebri of the midbrain, ventral or basilar part of the pons, then pyramids of the medulla brigata. Now, in the lower part of the pyramid of the medulla brigata, two thirds of the fibers they cross. Two thirds of the corticospinal tracts they cross and one third remain on the same side. Leave the medulla brigata to descend through the spinal cord. And terminate at different level.
So this is suppose a corresponding tract of the opposite side into the medulla brigata and in the lower part they cross. So here you can see there is crossing of the corticospinal tracts or pyramidal tracts. Corticospinal tracts or pyramidal tracts. So here there is pyramidal decussation. In the lower part of the medulla brigata, two-thirds of the pyramidal tracts they cross to the opposite side and one-third remain on the same side. And these enter into the spinal cord through various funiculi of the spinal cord. Now suppose if we cut a section of the spinal cord, No spinal cord section. This is the central canal of spinal cord. In the spinal cord, gray matter is inside, white matter is outside. This is the anterior horn of the spinal cord. This is the posterior horn of the spinal cord on each side. And the central part, which is traversed by the central canal. Now, if we draw an imaginary line, we can divide the spinal cord to right and left half. In each half, there are funiculi. This is known as anterior funiculus. Of spinal cord. This is lateral funiculus. spinal cord. And this is posterior funiculus of spinal cord. Now 
Now these pyramidal tracts, after decus partial decussation uh, in the after partial decussation in the lower part of the medulla obligata, here. Two-thirds of the corticospinal are pyramidal tracts, they cross to the opposite side, and one-third remain on the same side. Two-third cross and one-third uncrossed. So the two-thirds of pyramidal tracts which cross and descend through the spinal cord. Some of these cross fibers, they descend through the anterior funiculus and some through the posterior funiculus. Uh, uh, some through the lateral funiculus, sorry. So what are these? Tracts passing through the anterior funiculus of spinal cord, known as the anterior cortico spinal tract. Which one? Cross. Crossed interior or ventral corticospinal tract and some of the two-third fibers they continue into the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord and is known as the lateral corticospinal tract which one again crossed The remaining pyramidal tract, that is the uh, uncrossed fibers, one third uncrossed fibers, they continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. And known as the lateral corticospinal tract. But which one uncrossed? Uncrossed. So again, uh, I will repeat what about the uh, cortico. Uh, spinal tracts or pyramidal tracts. They arise from the cerebral cortex, descend through the corona radiata, pass through the internal capsule, descend through the crust cerebri of the midbrain, continue to descend through the ventral or basilar part of the pons, enter the medulla obligata. In the medulla obligata, two-thirds of these corticospinal tracts, they decussate, they cross to the opposite side and one-third remain on the same side. And from the medulla obligata, these continue to descend through the funiculi of spinal cord, which funiculi? Anterior funiculus and lateral funiculus. Now, as we have divided these pyramidal tracts or corticospinal tracts into crossed and uncrossed, so they descend through the funiculi of spinal cord and according to the funiculi they are named. So two-third cross fibers, some of the two-third of the cross fibers, they descend through the anterior funiculus of the spinal cord. Therefore, this corticospinal tract is known as the ventral or anterior corticospinal tract. Which fibers? Crossed. So crossed anterior corticospinal tract. 
remaining two third cross fibers they continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of spinal cord therefore they are named as the lateral cortico spinal tract again crossed so two third of the pyramidal tracts they decussate of which some continue to descend through the anterior funiculus spinal cord as anterior cortico spinal tract crossed anterior cortico spinal tract and remaining two third fibers continue to descend through the lateral funiculus of spinal cord and they are they are known as the crossed lateral cortico spinal tract now what about the uncrossed one third pyramidal tract fibers cortico spinal fibers they continue to descend through the spinal cord and they descend through which funiculus of spinal cord through lateral funiculus of spinal cord so these uncrossed one third fibers descend through the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord therefore they are known as the uncrossed lateral cortico spinal tract so in this way these uh, pyramidal tracts are divided into these three types so these were some of the uh, descending or motor tracts descending through the cross cerebri of the midbrain and they uh, terminate in the red nucleus of the midbrain in the pontine nuclei of the same side of the midbrain then into the nuclei of the medulla oblongata and then continue to descend through various funiculi of the spinal cord these are pyramidal tracts or cortico spinal tracts so these were some of the um, uh, tracts regarding their detail origin course and, and uh, termination now another important feature internal structure suppose this is at upper level so this is red nucleus a columbotrenal nucleus and a columbotrenal fibers now here this is the interpeduncular fossa interpeduncular fossa this is floor of the interpeduncular fossa floor of interpeduncular fossa which separate the right and left cross cerebri from each other and also right and left substantia nigra now the next important topic is inter pedicular nucleus Now it is an unpaired nucleus located here in the floor of interpeduncular fossa. In the floor of the interpeduncular fossa, in the midbrain, this is interpeduncular nucleus. Only one nucleus is present. Now, what is the importance of this uh, nucleus? it is uh, connected to the habinular nucleus through fasciculus retroflexus
the interpendicular nucleus it through a bundle of nerve fibers known as the fasciculus retroflexus is connected with the habenular nucleus which is an important part of the limbic system and already we discussed this in our previous lecture so the interpendicular uh, nucleus which is an arm pair nucleus located in the floor of the interpendicular fossa uh, in the midbrain it is connected to the habenular nucleus the habenular nucleus belong to the limbic system and the bundle of nerve fibers which connect the interpendicular nucleus with the habenular nucleus is the fasciculus retroflexus so therefore the interpendicular nucleus Uh, is a part of the limbic system which already we have discussed so uh, some of the uh, detail of some of the internal features of the midbrain we discussed and remaining uh, important features we will uh, continue to discuss in the um, uh, next lecture so uh, thank you very much and uh, keep learning thank you